Let's continue with our little look at the individual episodes of Fallout and try to explain why I have a bit of an issue with how the plot unfolded. I don't think anyone can complain about the set's props locations. They were all done to a very high standard. The problems arise from the mechanics of the world and how they interact with one another. So warning, this is going to be full on spoilers. While discussing episode 2 of Fallout, I'm going to be talking about issues with how it relates to episode 8 of Fallout. There will be massive spoilers, so this is only for people who have seen the Fallout TV show and want to discuss it in detail. I'll try to avoid just recapping my issues from last episode, but I will refer to them if appropriate. So last warning, I'm about to spoil the entire plot of Fallout Season 1. We'll work our way through chronologically and anytime we see a scene with an issue, we'll compare it to later episodes or perhaps even real life examples. You have been warned, so let's get into it. Spoilers! Song number one for the episode, 10 for the series. The ink spots, into each life some rain must fall. Okay, so the Enclave has vaults if we assume having a Pip-Boy means you're from a vault. The Enclave is also seemingly doing human experimentation with mutagens. Where does this guy get a German accent? So let me get this straight. Someone comes and trips the alarm in this guy's room. And no one responds. But somehow he's allowed to leave. Are the Enclave that inept? How did they get in contact with him in the first place to organise his defection? And this turret is just laughable. You could do it in so many ways. Have him hack it. Have obstacles that he can hide behind. Have a second person defect and have the turrets waste all of its rounds on him. Have a deer cross the turret sensor field and be annihilated. Have him turn back and leave another way. Song number two. 11. Bing Crosby, don't fence me in. Shouldn't Lucy be concerned about the number of sets of footprints around that beach ship? Luckily, it was Wilsey who found her. She's already been molested once by raiders, whom she's apparently familiar with already. She also hasn't used her rad meter once since leaving. If it's safe to be outside, why not open the vault? Okay, this is another big one. If Lucy can bump into Wilsey on her first day out of Vault 33, and Moldava was already at Vault 33 for an indeterminate amount of time, why couldn't Moldava just go pick up Wilsey herself, instead of having to pay random people a load of cash to get him to her? Wilsey calls the dog four, so it's not dog meat. Okay, nitpick time. How is the vertebrate achieving lift? Does it have wings? because the props are vertical. He's bored and he wants to shoot something, but he doesn't even carry his gun. Wowee, they just happened to stumble upon the cave Wilsey was near. How does seeing a can of cram imply a dog? How the hell does that bear sneak up on them? It has to walk, the ground is littered with leaves, and for the entire time it's on screen, it's grunting and growling. It's like the Walking Dead zombies and how they'll keep their mouth shut if someone's walking backwards, but if they're walking forwards, they never stop groaning. This is possibly the worst written scene in the show. Titus telling Maximus that he's going to tell everyone that the bear attack was his fault and they'll string him up by the lungs. What incentive does he have now? Tell him that's what they'll do if he doesn't give you the stim pack, you dumbass. Maximus in the fridge flashback count 3. Song number 3, 12 so far, Betty Hutton, It's a Man. Anyone else think Chicken Lover is a cross between Captain Jack Sparrow and Adam Savage? I like that we get some tire armour. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why is this place called Philly anyway? What are the odds Wilsey turns up five minutes after Lucy does? Yeah, 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 yeah. That scene where he realizes that the shell he removed from his bandolier is too big to go in the prop gun. 
Was Maximus just standing there, hidden out of sight, but still listening to this entire exchange? Maximus charging Lucy like that should be like a car hitting her. She should have broken bones and shards of wood through her body, as well as him landing on her. So now the power armor has a sidearm. Why didn't Titus use it on the bear? Or use it to kill Maximus for his insubordination? I think they did a terrible job editing the reactions of Maximus to the actions outside the power armor. He's staring blankly while things are exploding, then looking left when the action is to the right. So the ghoul knows of a weak spot in the T-60 power armor, seeing as he drove one in the war. But now he's in mortal danger from a Brotherhood Knight and he doesn't use this knowledge. Maximus had more than enough time to close the distance after punching the ghoul into those stairs. When the ghoul throws the hook, it looks like it comes from the right of screen rather than his hand. As they approach the down CCCP satellite, Lucy turns back to help Wilsey, but she doesn't leave any footprints in the sand. Why do they need the head when the light from the device is visible behind his ear? Just cut the device out. How does he know her name? Did Moldava tell him that she would be getting the code from Hank McLean? Song number four. 13 in total. The Ink Spots. I don't want to set the world on fire. That's the end of episode two of Fallout. Like episode one, I gave it at seven out of ten. It was okay. Just nothing special, pun intended. It still looks great, just a few issues with editing and timing. Probably the big issue from this episode is the scene of Titus telling Maximus what he's going to do to him when he gets back to the Brotherhood. That was just stupid. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows, and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie, thanks for your time, and have a good one.